Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another episode on the aqeedah that is the creed or the belief in the oneness of Allah in the last episode I was talking about the conditions of la ilaha illallah but when we say la ilaha illallah we have to understand one thing we're talking about divinity when we say la ilaha illallah we're talking about divinity what does that mean? it means exactly the words I mentioned last time la ilaha illallah it means there is no true God except Allah and no God who deserves to be worshipped other than Allah you know what we're talking about? we're talking about we're talking about the um, the one aspect of Tawheed. One aspect of Tawheed. Tawheed it means the belief in the oneness of Allah. This aspect is called Uluhiyya. And the term Uluhiyya is the state of Ilah. And the term Ilah, it means the one who is worshipped. That's where the word Allah or the name of Allah is derived from. You see, we say Allah, that means He is the one ma'luh. He is the one who is worshipped. Whereas the verb alaha, it means to worship. So we're talking about the uluhiyya. Uluhiyya is the divinity of Allah. Now, when we are talking about tawheed, which is the, um, the belief in the oneness of Allah, there are three aspects, three aspects of this um, uh, science, the science of Tawheed. The first aspect is the divinity, which we say uluhiyya, or the state of Allah. The state of Allah. What does that mean? It means that Allah is the one who is worshipped, not only who is worshipped, because there are so many who do not, who do not worship Allah. That's why Allah says, وَمَا أَكْثَرُ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَثْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ And even if you are so keen, O Messenger of Allah, the majority of people are not believers. They do not believe, in other words, they do not believe in Allah. And this is, it's very important for us. When we talk about uluhiyya, brothers and sisters, we have to understand one thing, that we cannot really, we cannot, um, love anything, any human being or anything more than we should, more than we should love Allah. And that's it, really, it, it, it's, it, this is our conviction. This is our belief. This is our creed. That Allah is to be loved most. That's why Allah says in the Quran, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ And some people who take objects of worship, and they love them more, more than they should love Allah. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ While those who believe, who believe in the oneness of Allah, they love Allah most. No comparison between the love of Allah and someone else. Wait a minute. Of course, we love our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah exalt his mention. But our love to the Prophet wasallam, although it's one aspect, one aspect of worship, but, but, the love of Allah should be uh, actually the supreme. In other words, we believe in Allah as the only God who deserves to be worshipped. This is one aspect of Tawheed. I said Tawheed's aspects are three. The first one, Uluhiyya. The second is Rububiyya. What does Rububiyya mean? As we know, Allah Taala calls Himself the Rabb of the world, Rabbul Alameen. Rabb, uh, by the way, it doesn't mean Lord. Come on, you know. I, I mean, when we're talking about this. We have to understand one thing. We should not copy uh, uh, people, uh, Christian people, when they refer to Jesus as the Lord. So we call Allah the Lord. That's wrong, because the term Lord, the term Lord, is is um, really uh, uh, apply. To human beings. Whereas Rabbul Alameen, it's a name which is uh, restricted to Allah, the Rabb al Alameen. So, what does Rububiyya mean? Rububiyya mean, brothers and sisters, is to believe. 
that Allah, he is the Rabb, he is the Rabb, he is the one who um, uh, sustains us, he is the one who provides us with everything we need, he is the one who gives life, he is the one who causes death, and he is the one who maintains and sustains the whole universe. That's why he calls himself Rabbul Alameen, he is the Rabb of the whole worlds. When you say what's the meaning of worlds, why do we pluralize, pluralize the term world? Is that because every creature is a world in, 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 in itself or in himself. I am a world of my own. You are a world of your own. Uh, trees have their own world. Jinn have their own world. And of course, human beings in general have their own world. And because he brought the whole thing into existence, this is the point. Because he brought the whole thing into existence, that's why he is the Rabb of the worlds. When we say Rabb of the worlds, he is the creator of the whole thing. So now, let, let me put it this way. I was talking about Uluhiyyah. Uluhiyyah is from the slave, from the creature to Allah. That means we worship Allah. Whereas Rububiyyah, Rububiyyah is from Allah to us. He gives us everything. And you know the meaning of Rabb? Where is it derived from? Rabba, the verb in Arabic, Rabba, to rear, to raise. You know what does that mean? It means that Allah is raising us with his favors, raising us with his graces. That he is, that's why he is our Rabb. And don't ever use the term Lord, please brothers, because it does not apply to Allah. The term Lord means master, proprietor, um, um, uh, landlord, and... They have, in, in certain European countries, they have the House of Lords. And by the way, they have uh, famous shoes, shoes brand, which is called uh, uh, Lord Shoes. I know it's not really um, befitting to mention that, uh, but come on. You know, you, we either call Allah as the Rabb, and when you translate, R-U-B-B. So he's the Rabb, he's the giver, giver of life take care of life, and he provides, and he does everything. Now, this is the second aspect. The first one, as I said, uluhiyya, which means um, uh, divinity, that is, uh, Allah is the only one who deserves to be worshipped. Second is rububiyya, that means we admit and recognize Allah as the only one who gives life and he uh, causes death and he provides us with everything we need. In other words, every creature depends on Allah for his means of subsistence. Now, the third aspect is the uh, uniqueness, uniqueness of his names and attributes. You find some people translate um, the uh, uniqueness of the names and attributes of Allah, uh, they, they, they call them as um, uh, the oneness, which is really, uh, it's pathetic. Uh, to refer to, these, uh, to this aspect, uh, the uniqueness of the names of Allah as the oneness of the name of Allah. Uh, if, you, if you reconsider it, actually, that means all the names are the same thing. All, this, all the names have the same meaning, which is wrong. You know, that when we say Allah is the hearer, of course, it's, it, it's completely different from when we say uh, the seer. Because hearing is one thing, and hearing is, is, is something else. So, what do I mean, uh, briefly, the uniqueness of the names and attributes of Allah, that means Allah is unique in his names and attributes. Unique, for instance, to make it clear for you. When we say Allah is the hearer, we hear too. Allah calls man hearer, but our hearing is imperfect. The hearing of Allah is perfect. So when we want to uh, actually um, say Allah is hearing, his hearing is perfect. You know why? Because uh, we may hear, we may hear something behind the wall, but we don't know what, 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 what is it. Why did it, I mean, why the sound came out? Who made it? We don't know. Whereas Allah knows every minute little thing. Every minute little thing, uh, as far as he, his hearing is, 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 is perfect. He can hear in the midst of the earth, down in the center of earth. He can hear everything uh, is taking place there. In other words, Allah's attributes are perfect. Ours, I can hear you, you can hear me, but 
Sometimes I can't hear you. You can hear my sound, the sound of my voice, but you cannot hear me. You see? So uh, that's why we say Allah's uh, attributes are perfect, and that's why we say the uniqueness, the uniqueness of his names and attributes. And I know that there are certain attributes of Allah um, are so, um, maybe they are so clear, and yet to us, when it comes to uh, certain, certain points, certain aspects, we find it somehow, somehow not confu uh, 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 confusing, but probably ambiguous, probably they need further, further uh, explanations uh, to, to, um, to be given in order to understand um, uh, these things. Next, next, inshallah, in the next episode, I'm going to talk about the, um, the uh, continue this, the attributes of Allah, as far as whether they are um, um, uh, physical or otherwise. We're going to talk about it until then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.